G'day everybody, Spud here from Spud's Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be modifying this beast, a JVC TMH 1900G. It's a pro video monitor, built in about 2004, 19 inches, beautiful CRT. Unfortunately, back in the day, it didn't come with RGB, it came with S-Video on composite, but I'm going to show you how to modify it so it does accept an RGB signal. Stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss it. So now we're just going to take a quick walk around the TV just to get familiar with it. Um, as you can see, I've got Guardian Heroes on the satin plane there. I apologise for that little flicker there. I just can't quite get my camera to sync into the 60 hertz. But there we've got the front buttons down the bottom. We've got chroma, contrast, volume, up and down menu and underscan. We've also got an A and B select, uh, input select there and a power button. I'll just come around to the side. And the way these PVMs or pro video monitors were designed was great. Um, much easier to modify than a standard consumer CRT. The boards are all split up so and really easy access. So this is the main board we'll be concentrating on. This is where the modification gets done and where the jungle is located. We've also got a mono speaker there for the for the unit. We come around the back. As you can see I've already done the modification but I'll walk you through it um, throughout the video. We come around the back We've got the BNC connectors there that I added in for the RGB as well as a blanking switch. And we come down, you can see the, the inputs here. We have an A and B uh, for composite. And we also have S video in plus an audio in. The good thing about this is it does have an in and out. Now I didn't do an in and out in the RGB, but the composite and S video has an in and out as well on it. Main power switch, we come around. Just dodge some power cords here, sorry. And we've got the other board here. Well, one good thing I noted about this is the flyback down here, it's well away from the video board. Uh, that means I can get away with not shielding the cables, etc. Um, I just don't think it's needed, and it's, it's made life a little bit easier in regards to termination as well. Um, being so far away from the flyback, there's no interference that's going to be caused. And as you can see, the unit itself, when I pick this up, I've hardly had to clean it at all. It, it's, it's a very clean unit. There's, there's hardly a speck of dust in it. So that's it for give you guys a bit of an, uh, an overview of what's actually in the monitor. And you, as you can see, the location of where I've done the RGB mod. So now let's get stuck into the actual modification itself. So here's just the specification from the manual for the monitor. The main points that I focus on when I'm looking at the specifications are the 750 TVL and also the NTSC power which is good and the 15 kilohertz um, analog signal. So let's move on to the mod itself now. So now this is where the fun begins. Looking at the schematic here for the CRT uh, and in front of the jungle here, the IC501, pay attention to the to the IC part number there so we can research that later on. We've got the analog RGB signals there into the jungle. And what confused me at the start was this particular section up here. Uh, I went looking for this on the CRT because it would indicate that uh, you could probably just plug a card in this to accept RGB. and um, and you should be right, but in fact, what happens is, when we look at it further, the all the values are X, and it doesn't actually give you uh, any detail. So, I think what happens is this schematic may cover a couple of CRTs, and the one in particular one that I've got actually doesn't have this portion to it. Here's an example of what I was talking about with IC601 you'll see that it's actually just blank solder pads and also the R641 and R642 etc. If we come back to here, that's these ones over here, it doesn't actually give any values and therefore the solder pads are blank. So in theory, while it did look like we could just plug a card in up here and you know we've got the RGB component switch here, uh, it, it actually it doesn't exist on this particular CRT. So when we come down to the the uh, 
uh, jungle IC chip and in particular these terminals here the, if we discount all the X's and whatnot what happens with the, well, my particular CRTs everything stops just here so we do have 533, 532, 531 capacitors as well as uh, 554 they're actually installed but all of them just go straight down to ground um, which means you know anything uh, past that it's just uh, the solder pads might be there but they, they just don't exist so that's a good starting point for me it did take me a little while to figure all that out you know it was a little bit confusing at the start but once I figured it all out then it's now quite a relatively straightforward modification by injecting the RGB straight into the jungle so what I was talking about before is 533, 532, 531 that was that was capacitors and resistors just in this section here which which I've now removed so that's this bit here so they're all taken out and this resistor here is taken out um, and therefore now it just leaves a straight input into those RGB um, terminals there the yellow wire I'm using here is just ground and the white is the blanking signal here always Google or always research the jungle chip because it does tell you a lot and this particular jungle chip the TA1276AN it's a Toshiba jungle uh, there's a, there's two main things we're looking at here one is this here which is 0 0.5 volt PP and this bit here which is 0 0.75 volt blanking they're the really critical p things that we need to be paying attention to when we're looking at RG RGB modding your CRT I'm not 100% sure what this bit is, this bit's a bit confusing and don't worry about 36, that's the blanking for the OSD. The reason why I said that 0.5 P to P back here was important is because when we look at a SCART connection uh, from our consoles or from video players etc the standard P to P voltage is 0.7 so if we don't do um, if we just do a normal standard RGB termination with a 75 ohm resistor and a, and a capacitor then we're going to be injecting the wrong voltage into the jungle because the jungle is expecting 0 0.5 so we have to make up a little circuit to get that voltage down and make sure it all matches other up otherwise you might have brightness contrast issues which you don't want so here's a standard 0 0.7 if it was straightforward if the jungle accepted 0 0.7 and you know the consoles or, or whatever you're plugging into it is 0 0.7 then this is a, just a standard RGB termination connection we've got 75 ohm resistor down to ground and then a little coupling capacitor there which is usually 0.1 microfarad or 100 uh, picofarad I think it is or yeah, just 0.1 microfarad but because we need to reduce that 0.7 down we look here we've got up here from the console 0 0.7 we're just creating a voltage divider here so we've still got 75 ohms 24 here 51 here add them together you get 75 so attenuating it still correctly we've still got our capacitor but we've now got this divider here and when we do the ratios you know 24 ohms and 51 ohms roughly drops this down or does drop it down from 0.7 to 0.5 so now once we do this little circuit up then we're going to be uh, sending the correct voltage to the jungle on the RGB input I've just used the red terminal here as an example but it's the same for green and blue you'll still have to do this particular um, circuit for those colors as well so when I made up the variable this is what it looked like um, if I just follow it in from the console so the top is coming from the console and the, then the one over, the, then the ones over to this side here, are they're going back out of the jungle. So if we look at the red, you know, it comes in to this resistor here, comes through here, through the capacitor, and out the jungle. So that's this part here. Now for the one down the ground, that's this here. So you'll see these two are joined, or the the variable terminals run that way, or the strip runs that way. So now we've got this here down to ground. This is our ground rail here. We do the same for green. So we've got the green that comes in through this resistor, through the capacitor, and back out to the jungle. We then have the star point, which you can't see under this blue wire here, and then out to ground. And then we've got the blue. So the blue comes in through the resistor, through the capacitor, and then out to the blue, 
and then we've taken this star point up to the earth or the ground here those three grounds you can see are the three grounds for the B and C connectors and the ground here is the ground that's coming from the jungle now we're just going to look at the blanking um, it's a little bit, uh, there's a few bit of information on this particular slide so we're taking the blanking from C129 which is down here uh, there was a little um, test point signal over here on the schematic or, or information which said that will actually be 0.75 I think it was so it matched up with what the blanking need to be I'm not 100% convinced that that's a stable voltage there but I haven't had any issues I've been playing this quite a lot or using it quite a lot and I just haven't had any dropouts or any issues with blanking if I do I'll probably look at feeding it off this 5 volt regulator it's a bit more stable just create a voltage divider get it down to the right voltage and then use that for blanking but this stage because I haven't had any issues um, and, I've, and I have been using it quite a bit then I I'm not too worried about um, the, the fluctuating voltages if any so that's it uh, for that now I'll just go back to the CRT and I'll run you through how I installed the Vero board and the BNC connectors So now we're back out at the CRT, I'll run you through just you know, how I installed it and um, you know the Vero board and the BNC connectors etc. So the Vero board is just double sided stuck down, I'll zoom in here if I can get a better angle here. It's just stuck down with some industrial sort of double sided tape, it is rubber so don't freak out that it's going to cause a short. Um, it's rubber back that's it just here i think the brand is I'll hold that up gorilla and that way you might be able to see that get the focus properly it's gorilla um yeah because it's rubber back that's probably the only one i could find at bunnings that was rubber back so that's why i grabbed that and i just use small strips there to also um keep the cable management nice and tidy um i put just put a that piece down and laid the cables over it and then put a piece over the top obviously I didn't peel the, pe the plastic back on the top piece otherwise it had dust and crap sticking all over over that so I've just left the plastic piece on the top and I haven't taken that off and moving around the back here to the BNC connectors I just picked these up at JCAR they're nothing special if you want to go for the fancy U butte ones go for it um, and just the little toggle switch there I also picked up at JCAR coming over the top and I'll see if I could get a good picture of this here just to show you how it's installed so that's how it's just installed there um, I didn't loop the ground at the actual BNC connectors I looped it at the Vero board I just found it easier and the toggle switch is just pretty straightforward there as well I will probably tie these cables up over the top just to make them a little bit neater as well just be aware when you are drilling your holes for your the back back panel so you can see get an overall picture there so to remove the back panel it's quite easy there's just a couple of screws down the bottom here there's a couple into the flyback over here and there's one up here and two here so if you just take them off this whole piece just comes off in just one flat panel but if you look over the back here I'll see if I can come this side you've just got to be aware of this bracket where you're drilling your holes and making sure that your BNC connectors are going to fall into that gap you don't want them interfering on that rail there you could probably move them over here if you wanted to or you could move them down the side I just found in the middle of that was just a nice spot one thing you might be wondering is where do I take my sink so as you see there the yellow wire just goes into input A and then on the front as long as we select the corresponding input which will be input A down the bottom then we should be sweet we select input B you'll see sync will drop out we go back to input A which we are syncing on with our composite and it's back that's just a, a quick guide there on, on what I did for sync. I didn't actually need to modify anything inside the CRT itself. So that's it from me. Uh, before I go, I'd like to give a big shout out to Mark Cowan or Mark, Oslo, Mark Oslad from the Shmups Forum. 
Um, he's also active on a couple of Facebook pages as well. Big thanks, Mark. Not only did you help me modify this CRT, but all the other CRTs you've helped me modify as well. So it's um, it's been it's been great actually you know, learning from you. So once again, thank you very much. Um, for any of you guys out there who might have questions regarding this modification, leave them in the comments. I will try and answer as many as I can. Um, and if you guys want to see more videos, then subscribe because I do plan on making some more uh, in and around my video game collection. So thanks, and I hope you enjoy it.